In this interview with Harry Zipanos, we are looking into how excess deuterium can make you fat and intolerant to mixed macro diets because of the Randall cycle activation. If you are new to this topic, I will recommend that you watch my interview with Dr. Sarah Pugh, where we cover this and some basics with regards to deuterium and what it is and what it can cause. So without further ado, here's Harry. Well, in regards to the Randall cycle, um, my sort of approach is I actually look back through some of the historical data and looking at, um, at how people ate in certain periods of time, their body composition and a lot of these sort of factors. And as I was going through recordings, and I did this deliberately because I wanted to see what variability existed in different times and people consuming different sort of diets in different sort of regions and all that. What I did notice was when you look at sort of a tribal population, um, it's usually, you know, the deuterium component that you find high in um, fruits within, you know, the seasonal stuff. That tends to slow down the ATPAs uh, because you're getting some level. It's not like excessive amounts you would get in seed oils, but you're getting some amounts that are actually both slowing down the ATPAs. And so you're producing less ATP and if you're producing less ATP the body's going to shuttle that excess into into fat any excess lactate that's produced also by deuterium and uh, excess glucose that's all going to go back um, to the liver it's going to be repackaged into triglycerides if it can't find a, a sufficient home it will end up in the adipose tissue and the more you consume these foods that are slowing down your ability to oxidize these substrates of food, in you know, energy substrates of food, you will end up storing it. And so that's a sort of rough mechanism that high deuterium foods will have that effect. Obviously, you know, excessively high amounts of um, fat beyond the level that you can actually store will also be put into the adipose tissue as well. So let's not be deluded about that. The difference is that you're not doing that continuously. And through the hours when you're not doing it, your insulin on such a diet will be much lower. So your and your hormone sensitive lipase will be elevated and you'll be able to tap into those. So it's less of an issue. You know, yes, you will, but when you're not eating, you'll be oxidizing what you'll be releasing free fatty acids because you're not impeded. Um, by you know mixing your macros or by um, consuming too many carbs that are going to be impeding and affecting hormone sensitive lipase due to it being inhibited by insulin's effect. You know, so these are the sort of difference, and, and we're talking about substantially different. Like somebody who's a vegan who's not engaged in the Randall cycle, that level is going to be much lower than um, the, the, the fresh threshold because I've got an an insulin to glucagon ratio of four, um, low carb people or carnivores are about one point three to one one point five, um, fasting is zero point eight. Just so people can get a reference of what the differences are. So you know when we're talking about somebody engaging the Randall cycle at a very high gradient, like on a sad diet, consuming shitloads of fructose and glucose and 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 or seed oils and all this milieus together obviously their level of insulin to glucagon can be as high as 70 literally just shutting off all the um, ability to release free fatty acids for not just hours but for days in many cases you know so that is why people on the standard American diet gets so fat um, over over time compared to any other sort of dietary approach. Now, there is the component of deuterium. And obviously, seed oils can be as high as 255 parts per million, way above the what is called the toxic level of 180 parts per million. It's a rough number that some academics came up with you know, so the safe sort of zone is between the the hundred and hundred and um, thirty odd olive oil being at the at that top end, and then you know most proteins are in the 
are above that within 130 to 140 range, but you're not oxidizing those unless you're really down very low in body fat and don't have uh, much food energy coming in, you know, food mass that can be converted to to be utilized for energy purposes for the production of ATP. The thing that uh, we need to keep in the, in the, in the consideration when it comes to the gradient how far that gradient is actually affected, how how much those glucose and fats are going to be locked out of the actual cell is really determined how fast the energy inside the cell can be oxidized. Now, if you've got high deuterium coming through, you more neutrons coming through the ATPAs, those little nanomotors, they're going to slow them down. And potentially, if there's too much, like from CDOS, they'll bust some of those, reducing the capacity of oxidative phosphorylation by the mitochondria of that cell. That's the the mechanism how you end up being a, that cell being pushed into a much higher gradient of Randall cycle activation due to the inability to oxidize like a more healthier cell, a less damaged cell that's got mitochondria that have got a much higher density of good mitochondria with far more ATPAs in them, because all those folds, as you know, um, there's multiple uh, little electron tra- um, chains on those membranes. And the more you lose of those, and the more those folds actually deteriorate and get damaged and oxidi- oxidized by industrial seed oils, which are high in aldehydes and stuff like that, and they damage those membranes, those mitochondria get severely deranged and damaged. And that's where they start shifting towards more senescence because they can't produce enough ATP to heal themselves. But also, they end up they end up from even small amounts of um, uh, you know the threshold of the amount of carbs in the system doesn't have to be as high as you know the standard American diet. It can be at a much lower level because if that cell has much more da- damage and has less t- capacity to oxidize um, uh, fats and sugar. So even at a much lower level, you can struggle to basically oxidize that energy and you'll end up engaging the Randall cycle at a much lower threshold in terms of uh, mix macros. And this probably explains the reason why we see this, and I've dubbed it that Randall cycle um, gradient becomes worse over time due to the damage that the deuterium is doing. So if you look at if you look at um, a population back in the fifties and sixties and stuff like that, most people do mixed diets. They were getting about thirty percent carbs, thirty percent fat, thirty percent protein, more or less a third of each, give or take. It varied, um, but within the population. But you know, and we and we know that young people can eat practically anything, and very few, unless you know, you've got the pot and just cat um, sort of consequences of multi generational really bad dieting, and then kids at a much younger age are starting to get obese, damaged, and whatever else, and all sorts of conditions, cancer, and whatever else, and that's because they're inheriting from their parents a lot of the damage in the womb. In the, when you're looking at the fifties and sixties. You only see the elderly that have much higher adiposity, mm. not the younger people. So you see that contrast where for us it's just shifting to younger and younger and younger and younger. And it's due to basically that we are becoming less and less tolerant to mixed macros because of the deuterium damage that we're causing ourselves. That's really where it's coming from. And uh, most people have sort of missed that. 